Good morning, welcome to Furry and Spoil. Today I'm going to talk to you about why is my dog crying after he eats. The video you need to watch is my video about bloat and trapped wind in dogs and that video is coming up now. Hello, welcome to Furry and Spoil. Today I'm going to talk to you about trapped wind and bloat in dogs. They are to be taken very seriously. Now, trap wind, you can sort out yourself, but if that goes on to become bloat, it will kill, it can kill your dog and kills many, many dogs, and it's something that you need to take very seriously. So I'm going to go through with you very basically what it is and why it happens, and then I'm going to talk to you about ways to avoid it. I'm going to talk to you about the signs of bloat, and then I'm going to demonstrate how I get rid of trapped wind in my dogs. I've got two, I've got three dogs, but two of the dogs that I have at the moment um it, in the beginning of me having them they used to eat really fast and so i have stopped that completely because the fast eating causes trapped wind i've just done a video about how to stop a dog eating fast and if your dog is eating too fast go and watch it because it's such a simple tip that i do but it works it completely stops dogs eating fast so let's just get this really clear your dog can get trapped wind and like i said Actually, it's the two you can see in this video have both had trapped wind when I first got them and they first started eating too fast. Trapped wind can then go on to become bloat and that's when it can get deadly. So just let me explain to you what happens. So if they eat too fast, they are gulping in lots of air and that air goes into their stomach and becomes trapped. And that's really painful for them. And if that becomes trapped they will run around crying and like I said these two dogs here have, I've seen it with them both and they run around crying because it's painful for them and then what I do is and I'm going to demonstrate this a bit later on in the video I just put my hand between their front two legs and rub and they burp just like you know when you burp a child and they burp it burp and burp and burp and then that's it it's over and it stops with Albert here that's sort of blocking the view um when he was about two he just started eating really fast and we actually changed his food and he really liked the new food and he just started eating really fast and then he started getting trapped wind and so I I just instinctively knew to rub his tummy I, I don't know I suppose you just don't know but I just instinctively knew to rub his tummy and he burped and it was all fine. And I put him onto the, like, I, 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 I go and watch another video so I'm not repeating myself all the time. But I did what I do to stop them eating fast and um, all of that stopped. And then that was, I don't even know, seven years ago or whatever. And then now we've got humps just recently um, and he eats incredibly fast. And I, I saw him eating and I thought, well, he's eating way too fast. And before I could even have the thought, he was running around crying because he had trapped wind. And I just did the exact same thing. And what the thing about that was, that was the first night we had him. He's a dog from South Korea, you know, really not being handled, not used to being handled. And he's a biter, um, which was sorting out fine. But, you know, we don't, I didn't know this dog. But without even thinking about it, I just put my hands in between his two front legs, rubbed it, and he burped it up and it was fine. Because I knew it could have got serious and then I knew he's a fast eater. I've got to sort that out. I knew how to sort it out, sorted it out and it was all fine. So I've, when I've burped my boys, burped them up and it's just been absolutely fine. There's not been any problems since. So that's trapped wind. But what can go on to happen is, is that that trapped wind, if you don't get it out, can expand the stomach. And then what happens is the stomach starts twisting and that is where you're in big trouble because it restricts the blood flow it kills the outer lining of the stomach and then can go on to kill the dog and kills many many dogs and what happens is if the dog is deep chested so like bigger dogs like german shepherds St. Bernard's, that kind of dog but like i said you know these two dogs that i'm talking about now that i've got they're not big dogs um, but they got the trap wind. But if there's enough room in the abdomen for the stomach to move, 
then the stomach can start to twist and that's when you end up in big 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 trouble so you it's bigger dogs are more prone to it because there's more room in their abdomen for the stomach to do that but smaller it can happen with smaller dogs too and so if the trap wind is just left and you don't do anything about it that can expand expand the stomach the stomach can twist that restricts blood flow and then your dog, your dog can die from that um so that's actually cool. if you just I just I don't get more complicated than that with it. Like why the dog why it actually kills the dog can get a bit more complicated. But in my mind, I don't need to know that. I don't care about that. Well, I do care about it, but you know what I mean. That's not what I focus on. I just focus on the fact that your dog can get trapped wind from gulping too much air from eating too fast. If you don't get that air out of the stomach, it can like blow the stomach up, hence bloat, and then the stomach twists and then you're in big trouble that's all I remember how I always remember it um another thing that I always remember is that if a dog is chewing a toy or a bone for a long period of time they could be gulping in excess air there and so that's something to really watch and another thing that you know if you know me at all or my channel I'm fanatical about dog nutrition and one of the things is that sometimes happens is that if you feed your dog a bad dog food and that dog's got grain in it and things like that, the grain in itself can cause of can give off a gas in the stomach and you can cause the same thing to happen. If you don't know about dog food and what's in it and whether it's good or not, um, I've got a playlist of... Um, how to understand what's in dog food and in that it will exp I explain in great detail how to read the back ingredients of a dog food and to make sure that it hasn't got anything in it that can cause gas like grains and cereals and barley and oats and all that kind of thing so go to playlist what I feed my dogs and then go to how to understand um, the ingredients in dog food um, I won't pop it on the end because on the end I want to put the video about how to slow down your dog if he's heating too fast. I think that's very, very important that you see that video. So I'm going to put that at the end. Now, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go through the signs of bloat because the signs of actual bloat aren't just the running around and crying like they get when they get the trap win. There's a lot more signs for you to see. Um, and then in a minute, I'm going to demonstrate on one of my boys um, what the movement I do to stop the trapped wind. So in a minute, you're going to see me demonstrate what I do when my dog has trapped wind. If you know your dog, really get your hands in under their belly and, you know, give it a really good rub that I'll show you in a minute. But what you need to know here is with Hump, so he's, uh, I'm getting sick of hearing myself saying this. He's our rescue dog from South Korea. He's come from the meat trade and we've only had him a couple of months. Um, and when we got him, massive handling issues. You really couldn't handle him at all. He would bite, um, especially around his back legs because he had terrible arthritis. Which, by the way, if you've watched my other videos about arthritis and supplements... Work, they are working so well, I can't tell you. I will do an update on that. In fact, all, this, all the research I did with arthritis, there's a whole playlist about it. I can't tell you the difference it's made to his life. Such a difference. But that's a different video. But anyway, so because of the back leg issue, although it's doing his... You will see how much how well I can handle him. But I still have to be aware that he is, you know, around those back legs, he's worried. Not because they're hurting him, but just because in, in his past life, goodness knows, who, you know, what they did to his back legs. So the point being, you will see in this video, I have to go cautiously. I can't just get in around his back legs and rub around. So just something to point out. If you know your dog and all is well and friendly, really get your hands in there like I show you in a minute. If your dog is a bit bitey or for whatever reason, you, maybe your dog's new to you, um, go cautiously, you know, where the problems are. But well, watch the video. I'm going to show you in a minute what I do. Do is... I would just put my hand between the front legs and just rub like that. And that has always been enough to make them burp. 
sometimes they'll burp as you're doing it and sometimes after you stop they'll burp but there won't be a big gap between you stopping doing it and then burping now they won't always burp sometimes they won't burp but they just won't cry anymore and they won't be running around and i've always done it like this now i can't do this on humps because he's got arthritis in his back legs and but what i would do, and I, I don't want to do it to him but what i would do is with any other dog although he's demonstrating quite nicely is then rub the tummy now i've never found that a dog that's got trap wind would go into this position because it'd be way too uncomfortable so just go down like this and rub all around the tummy. And not hard, but you do need to put a bit of pressure on it. Um, but, and you'll find that that will just move it. Um, and like I said, so there's been a couple of times when we first got humps, his first meal, I had to do it. And then with Albert, when he was about two, he suddenly just had ate one of his meals way too fast. And I had to do it. And just rubbing it has um, always immediately stopped the pain. Okay, so let me go through some signs with you. We've got Harry here. He 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 um comes from a very hot country and we're in the UK and he gets cold. And so after he's had his walk in the morning, he always gets cuddled up in his blanket. Right, the signs. So like I said before, when my dogs have had trapped wind, the signs that they've got that are that they are pacing, they're moving around. It's not massively fast, but they're moving around and they're crying. It's very clear signs to me. It's that simple. Now, with bloat, there are so many more signs. There are breathing difficulties. They might try to um, be sick. Again, lots of pacing. Clearly, something is very wrong. They don't always cry when they get to the point of having bloat because they're panicked because they know something's very wrong. There are so many different signs and I just think that makes it confusing. The way I tell people to deal with this is if your dog is pacing and uncomfortable and something is wrong and they've just eaten or they've just been chewing a toy, you just got to use your initiative with it and get them to the vet. Once I did with Albert. So like I said with Albert, when he was about two, he just suddenly out of nowhere started eating really, really fast. So the first night he did it, I knew instinctively that he had trap wind and I knew exactly what to do and I stopped it. And then the second night, he, I put out, you know, I did the flat bowl thing like I've shown you in the other video. But he just, he didn't, this is something that's really important. He didn't show any signs of having trap wind. He just suddenly about, maybe 15 minutes after eating so that's something to really watch it can be quite a little bit of time after they've eaten i found with trap wind it's always like instantly but sometimes if you miss the signs of trap wind and it goes on to be blow that can be 15 20 minutes later um and he started pacing really badly and i was rubbing his tummy and it wasn't doing anything and he was still crying um and i just thought it's bloat and it was like you know evening time or whatever and I just phoned the vets up and I said I think my dog's got bloat and they don't mess around and we were straight in there and she it wasn't bloat as it happened um, and she gave him a sickness tablet um, just to make him be sick um, and she said it wasn't bloat she thinks that for whatever reason he had tummy ache um, and it wasn't bloat but the point is it's not worth taking the risk now if you watch my channel a lot you'll know I'm not the biggest fan of vets and I'm certainly not one that just goes running to the vets for anything. However, there are times when you need a vet and with bloat, it is one of those times. Don't mess around with it. And if you phone up a vet, whether it's three o'clock in the morning or during the day or whatever, and say, my, I think my dog's got bloat. If they're a good, or not just any vet, shouldn't mess around. They should know immediately that that is very, very serious and that get you there straight away. And what they'll do when they get you in, they're quite good at just feeling and just knowing. Now, with Albert, it was a bit harder for us to tell whether or not his stomach had bloated because he's a barrel shape as it is, because he's got Bichon in him and Staffy in him. So he's, he's a barrel shape as it is. So it was harder to really to, for us to be able to tell. But they knew it wasn't. They said, no, it, it wasn't bloat. Um, if they decide your dog has got bloat, what they do is they just put a, like a needle in through into the stomach and they release the air really quickly. Because you've got to get that air out really, really quickly so that the stomach doesn't keep twisting. 
and they'll do that if it's something that you um he they think there's going to be an ongoing problem with it they'll actually stitch the stomach to the side of the of the body so that it can't keep it can't twist um and like i've said in dogs with deep chested bigger dogs there's more room for the stomach to move around in the body and so therefore it's more of a risk and once your dog has had bloat once it can be an ongoing problem and they can be really really prone to it you know even if they didn't eat that fast so um, when you get to the vets that's what they'll do they will take it very seriously a thing that can cause bloat is if you feed your dog and then you take them out for a walk too soon afterwards that can cause the gases to um, appear um, and then and also the movement of walking it, it's just a bad bad um, set of circumstances for bloat so I always, without fail, I feed my dogs and then I wait an hour before I walk them. I, I don't, that is just how it is. I don't mess around with that at all um, or let them play or anything. So what I do is I get up in the morning and I feed my dogs straight away. So my dogs get fed before their walk. Um, so I get up, um, I get up at six o'clock in the morning and I feed them straight away. It's the first job I do. And then I get myself showered and ready and sorted for the day. And that takes about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and then we go out for our walk. So there are no, there are no concerns with bloat at all. Um, now, I know you could say, well, why don't you just feed them after your walk? And this is because <coughs> it hasn't, I can't find clear, absolute evidence that feeding your dog close to uh, close uh, uh, so if you walk your dog and then you feed them close to that time there are stories and case studies where that has caused bloat but it's not something like definitely 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 walking a dog straight after you fed them is is real bloat risk it's, you're asking for trouble but i i've said, read enough stories for me to be bothered about it but not enough for me to say to you definitely don't feed your dog straight after a walk I know a lot of people, in fact, a lot, a lot of people who walk their dog and then feed them straight afterwards and there are no problems. But because I know that Albert and now Humps have issues with trap wind, there is no way on this planet I'm risking it. And so feeding them as soon as I get up, waiting an hour, 15 minutes, then walking them works perfectly for me and I have absolutely no problems at all with it at all. So... <clears throat> That's it all. As you can tell, it's very serious and something you definitely need to be aware of. It isn't, you know, so much with dog stuff, serious stuff. You don't want to go living your life worrying about it. You certainly don't. And you don't want to be watching them all the time. And you don't, you don't want to be living your life like that. But if you're aware of it and you put things in place to prevent it, then it isn't something that you're going to have to think about. So although uh, two of mine, Harry, not Harry, this is Harry. <laughs> Albert and Humps have both had trap wind. I don't, after they've eaten, watch them and uh, I just don't. I know that I've slowed them right down. Um, and I'm just, I relax about it. Um, I supervise their feeding. I'm around, well, I'm always around my dogs. They're always with me. But, you know, I'm just around. So if there were any problems, I'm there. Um, I definitely, definitely wouldn't feed a dog and then go out and leave him. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Because you don't know that that dog just didn't eat too far. Just don't ever do that. That that really, please don't do that. That's very, very. Oh, don't ever do that. It's dangerous. You just don't know. You know, even if your dog isn't like Albert, he wasn't a fast eater. He was fine. Um, and then <laughs> did I move the cushion? Sorry, sweetheart. Albert over here. He wasn't a fast eater. He was absolutely fine. And it was when he was about two, he just suddenly started eating really fast and getting trapped wind. So you don't know that your dog's just not going to suddenly start eating fast. I don't know why he did it, but he just did. So uh, please don't feed your dog and then leave them. Feed your dog at a time when you can be there and with them. You need to be anyway, because you've got to let them out and stuff. Anyway, that's a whole different subject, isn't it? So um, that's everything. So, um, you know, as always, Google this, do your own research. So it's not just some woman on YouTube saying it. Um, it's actually, you know, is what it is and it's true and you know, but so that you believe it. What I need, as with everything that I talk about on this channel, I need you to believe that it's a problem and that, you know, it's a real thing. I need you to believe that. If you believe just from me saying it, then that's absolutely fabulous. I've done my job. But if you're thinking, yeah, right, whatever, 
please Google it. Don't, don't please, please don't. If you're if you watch this video and you're thinking, yeah, I don't. She doesn't know what she's talking about. No, please don't. You think that about me? Yeah, fine if you want to. But please go and Google it so that you know that bloat is a real problem. Put your things into place and then get on with your life. But can I have your stories? If your dog's had bloat, what caused it? I'm really interested in that. Anything you do to prevent it? Please let me know. And um, the video um, that I did about how to stop dogs eating fast um, is really important that you watch that because um, I have. I, that's how I stop them all eating fast. I'm going to put it, you know, the video you can put in on the end. I'll um, put that video in on the end. Um, and if you haven't watched it, it's really worth it. Because even if your dog isn't eating fast now, it's such a simple thing that I've done and it's working so well. So even if your dog isn't eating fast, it's really worth putting it in place. It just prevents it from ever happening. So I'll pop that video in on the end. So um, thanks very much for watching. Um, you know where I am, Instagram, Twitter, subscribe. You know how it all works, you know all the stuff. Um, you know, any question at all that you have, don't hesitate to ask me. Really appreciate the conversations we're having on Twitter. I, I'm loving hearing about your dogs. Um, and I'd really just lo I'd, I love hearing your story. What do you do to stop your dogs eating fast? Is, if it's something you've never had a problem with in your life, let, let me know. I, I just love hearing your stories with your dogs. So pop them all into comments. And um, I think that's it then. So thank you very much for watching. As always, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.